Hey folks, Valkyrs here with another Old World Test Patch review, this time for Test Patch 62179 on August 10th, 2022. This is a pretty small test patch, pretty cozy, not too many things. We should be able to get through it quickly. Starting off with design changes, the free worker bonus card now starts at administration instead of plus. So before, the free worker card used to be here on polis, now it's down here on administration. It's a good change. It gives you the opportunity to get a free worker much earlier. Uh, you don't have to get two techs to get it, uh, so it may be more useful to you. It'll always be of the family of your capital, which is good because your capital is usually pretty busy doing many other things and doesn't really have temp to build a worker. Not sure whether I'll personally end up taking that free worker card more often, since I tend not to get administration pretty early in the game. But if you're doing something like a landowner start where you're getting a granary next to two great farms, then potentially you might go for that free worker card. Ultimately, we should see people take more free worker cards, and since that was not being picked very often, I think this is a good change. The Egyptian improvement cost bonus now only tests for finished improvement. One of Egypt's nation bonuses is that when you build an improvement next to an improvement of the same type or the same class, like a theater next to an Odeon or two farms next to each other, the cost of the second improvement that you're building is minus 25%. What this patch note changes is that bonus now applies only next to improvements that are already done. So you can't do things like start a mine and then start another mine next to it with the first mine not being complete to get the bonus. It's a small sort of design fix. Glad to see it in. Next, events that reduce discontent have had the discontent reduction value doubled. Essentially, this means if you've got an event that says minus 40 discontent for a city, it will now be minus 80 discontent for the city. And to refresh your memory, discontent is found down here within the city screen. It's this bar with the unhappiness. It ticks up um, an amount every turn. And then each time this bar fills up, that goes up one level in discontent there. So you'll see an event like minus 40 discontent that moves this bar minus 40. Uh, but you'll also sometimes see events that is minus a discontent level that basically resets the bar. Uh, most prominently, perhaps, once you research coinage, the chancellor has a message mission called Pacify City that lets you reduce a city's discontent level by one. Um, this patch note just refers to events that reduce flat discontent instead of discontent levels, and that's just what's doubled. Blessed and Cursed now remove the opposing effect. This is a small fix that you can't have a character that's both blessed and cursed. Uh, whichever one they get most recently will remove the other one. Choose law events now occur less frequency when a player has a higher civic threshold. This couples with a UI change here, where you see a reminder added for when laws can be adopted. Um, sometimes when you have a bunch of laws that you haven't adopted and you hit 400 civics, right now in the game you'll get like a, an event for every law you haven't adopted, which is a little annoying. Now that'll just show up in the reminder and you won't get the event um, to actually have an event to choose a law until you have more civics, which makes sense. And I think it's better to have events um, sort of be events and have sort of notifications show up as reminders in the UI. Various programming improvements, uh, including making rivers a little easier to see on the lowest detail settings, as well as improvements to AI, including handling of disciples uh, and succession reassigning jobs. It's also worth noting from data mining by Xiao Mao, um, diplomacy now is slightly dependent on archetype. So uh, warlike thing command warlike archetypes like commanders, hero, tacticians, and zealots uh, are less likely to join alliances. Um, but uh, less warlike leaders like judges, scholars, or builders are easier to um, become friends with. And schemers, again from Xiao Mao's data landing, uh, are more suspicious of alliances than they were before. Some cool UI changes, some of whom uh, are from suggestions from the community. So there's an all improvements worker filter that now shows improvements in a grid. So when you select a worker, there's these filters here, show valid improvements, show wonders, show rural improvements, show urban improvements, and then there's show all improvements, which used to be a very long list that you could scroll. But now it's this very cool grid. This is a suggestion from Fimble Vector on the Discord that got implemented. And in fact, it got tweeted about by Mohawk. Uh, super awesome to see Mohawk incorporating community suggestions like this and putting them in the game literally within a week, which is kind of like super fast. Uh, and this for experienced players, super useful to be able to see all the improvements that you can build all at once in a glance. Next up, the bridge model appears when roads cross rivers, when you have engineering. So engineering here 
uh, is a law pretty late in the game. Um, it lets you have t minus 25% wonder costs. It used to have minus one turn on improvements, but it actually went away last patch. I did not notice that because uh, it was in the patch notes, so I should note that here. And now, uh, new as of last patch, roads bridge across rivers. And what's new now is there's now a cool graphic for that in game. All right, I have some urban tiles, which now have roads, uh, new as of last patch. If we select this worker and build a road here, we'll see cool bridges show up across um, the rivers, which is really nice to see. And that's again, because I have the engineering law active. Going from simple to advanced settings, the number of AI opponents get set to the default for that map size. So when you're setting up the game, there's the simple setup where you can select uh, difficulty and map script and map size. Then there's the advanced setup. And now when you toggle back over, this number of opponents just happens to go to whatever you've set for the map size uh, for that. So if I go back to small and toggle over, it's now down to three opponents. More help text has been added to the server screen. Movement pip colors turn orange when force march is used with force march set to double fatigue. So on that advanced setup screen, there is an option here for forced march. You can pick unlimited, which is the default, disabled, where it's turned off, or double fatigue. So here we are in game with force march um, double fatigue enabled. And I can hit force march. And now this is full of orange pips to show me how many moves I can make with that double fatigue force march available. Uh, of course, each move takes two orders when you're force marching, and I only happen to have one order left. I can't use all of them here. Uh, but you can see that the orange pips keep track of double fatigue force march. Super happy to see this. This was one of my suggestions. Uh, you may remember it from the last uh, patch review video, so glad to see this implemented in the game. Makes it really clear exactly how far you can move with double fatigue force march. Lastly, rounding out the UI changes, there's now a reminder for when you can adopt laws. And that reminder lives here, down here, just like all the reminders. And this little exclamation point is actually a really great way to keep track of things you can do in-game. Um, and now there's a section that you can adopt a law. And if you click it, it opens up the law screen and lets you pick. So great change as well. That's it for this patch review. Here are the bug fixes, improvements to camera pan. The game no longer shows orders preview uh, for moves outside of force march limit. That's another bug uh, I have reported, so happy to see that. There's some issues fixed with the mod browser, various text and event fixes. It's no longer possible to hire units on the actual city tile itself. Uh, some issues found in no characters mode, some issues fixed with terrain around mountains, uh, issues with recapturing a teammate city. Edit hotkeys now works again. Nested tooltips now show when locked with shift. Carthage uh, has their goal completable in the first scenario. Barbarian horde map has raiders now being able to no longer spawn on inaccessible tiles, and the Barbarian Horde Tribe Peace Alliance ambitions are no longer present in the scenario. Various small UI improvements and adjustments to how turn scale is handled in Russian. So pretty small patch this time around, um, but all in all, uh, nice to see the game continue to see, get development and iterative development, and looking forward to seeing what we'll see in future patches. Have a good one.